Welcome back guys to my channel. My name is Mohamed Silla. I'm here to teach and transform the tech. Uh, thanks for subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you've not done that, please do that and tap on the bell to get a notification anytime I upload a video. Like, comment and subscribe and share to your friends as well who could benefit from my videos. This week, we are looking at the part two of introduction to Adobe Photoshop. This is going to be a five part four or five part uh, videos that's going to introduce adobe photoshop to uh, beginners total beginners so last week we dealt into uh, just having a feel of what the uh, photoshop is all about adobe photoshop is all about how to download it uh, a little bit about the interface how to import a file uh, more uh, made the menu options move to crop to selection to and a couple of others all right so that being said let's jump right into this week videos and uh, today we'll be looking at we'll be delving more into Adobe tools so let me open my Photoshop we'll be delving more into the tools that are available for you as a designer and uh, in Photoshop and also looking at a bit of uh, rgb cmyk and uh, saving a file naming a file so without wasting much time let's jump into the video today i'll be working with a couple of video a uh, couple of uh, pictures i downloaded from uh, on splash which i'll make available i'll put the, this, uh, the link in the description you can get the videos you can get the pictures i don't know why i keep saying video you can get the videos and uh, I hate editing when I'm done doing a video, so I don't know why I'm keep, I keep saying video. You can get the pictures and the practice on your own. So let me open. <clears throat> okay, so we'll be working with these pictures and more, uh, hopefully, within this uh, lesson. So let me open a couple of them. So drag is one way like we discussed earlier last week on how to open a file or uh, file open search for So let, let's start with this and touch based on auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. So these are three basic uh, adjustments that you can immediately do to a picture when you import it. And so let's duplicate it so that we are able to see duplicate. So you can duplicate a layer to so Control J or Option J on MacBook to duplicate. You realize that so you have two, two layers now, both of them the same or you can right click and then duplicate layer at the top All right so for the first layer let's apply auto tone so you see there's a slight change there is a very slight change the auto tone auto contrast and auto color apply certain changes depending on the brightness or darkness of a, of a, of a picture right so this was uh auto tone so let's name that auto auto tone to to name a file you just double click on the name and then it gives you it it, it, it gives you the option to change so let's do another one so we are instead of auto tone let's do auto contrast so you realize that auto contrast is there's not much difference to it. So let's auto con auto contrast. Let's duplicate, and this time we apply auto color. So you see there's a, so depending on the auto color. 
depending on the particular picture yet brightness or darkness the saturation the hue and saturation of the, the picture this all these effects will have different uh, all this adjustment all this auto adjustment will have different effect on the picture all right so that's just out of the blue into put you don't want to do much of editing you can try any of them and it gives if, if it gives you what exactly you are looking for then there's no need to go into adjustments and all that it's, it's kind of quick like fast food pick and go right but it's, it's good to also learn the adjustments uh, available for uh, images in Photoshop which we will delve in, in not this week but maybe the subsequent videos will delve into uh, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, uh, exposure, vibrance and so on and so forth all right so that's, that's just for the for starting up now naming a file or saving a file so let's go when, when you're, let's say you are done with you you've, you've uh, you are done with an artwork and you want to save it you go to file and save us now the save us make sure that you always save your psd file until you are done with your full body of work until you are done with your artwork then you can save into other files that are available to you so we have a couple of them the mostly used ones are pdf you have png that's an image with no background uh it's supposed to have no background so when you are when designing it you make sure that the last layer is not visible making the whole artwork uh, without with no background so you save it in png there's jpeg there's give there's a couple of them so when you are done with your artwork and you want to share it out on social media you save it in jpeg or png you put it out there if you are sending it for print you can save in jpeg or pdf and send to print for printing so so let's say you had, so you just name name find your location and save it it's as simple as that make sure when you are when you are working you are, you are always saving your file control s or option s on comma on the macbook to always save your your work right so now let's delve into the tools we are going to go deeper into the tools some of them have introduced them i introduced them uh, let's delete all these layers some i introduced previously in a uh, in our last video so i'm not going to do i'm not going to spend much time on some of them so the move tool like i said is just to move your file so the file comes in and it's locked so uh, as soon as you try to move it actually to convert it to a normal layer that means to move it from a locked layer to a normal layer to convert right so now you can move around so it's as simple as that the move tool we, we, we discussed it in depthly last time now what i want to bring to your attention is where we have the artboard tool the so until recently the artboard tool was the, was found in illustrator all right but recently i think if, if, I'm, if my mind sets me right just two editions back i think 2020 that the artboard tool was uh was introduced to photoshop so the artboard tool basically gives you the opportunity so the so now you are working with only one at one uh, canvas the artboard gives you the opportunity to work with a couple of different more than one canvas within one file right so let's say i want to have this as a, canv as a canvas so it gives me this as an artboard so i can duplicate and have another artboard duplicate and have another artboard so to zoom in or zoom out control minus control plus i think that will be option minus option plus on macbook i'm using windows so i might not be very uh, familiar with the options but i know control when it comes to macbook is option so when i mention control plus or control j or control h for macbook is option those letters right so artboard gives you the opportunity so now you realize that you have different artboard artboard one artboard two artboard three you can hide any one of them so yeah you have the opportunity to work on this as a as a canvas on its own work on this as a canvas on its own work on this as a canvas on its own and when you are done you can individually save them all or combine them in pdf form so yeah that's the artboard so let's uh undo control z that's to undo so that macbook will be uh, option z all right so you have the 
that's the output for you now the next two we are going to look at the, the marquee tools so last week we, look, we also looked uh, into those items selection tools rectangular uh, elliptical a singular row is, is, is it select just one pixel one pixel row or one pixel column so let's zoom in and see the selection that was done zoom in realize that it's just selected just one pixel so just one pixel row or one pixel column this will come in handy as you move forward i'll find a, a real life scenario where this can be used and discuss that uh, later on in a subsequent video so these are just selections too that we discussed uh, previously so but what i want to what i want us to do is practically use some of them so i'm going to open an image and you, you let's use uh so let's say we have let me open this so you have this image right you have a you have a particular uh, design in mind that you want to use the image of this man but you don't want the background you want a total different background so you are going to use a selection tool so in one of them i i i, I mostly i'm navigate i'm uh, moved towards lasso or polygonal depending on the image i'm working with so if if it was to be a rectangle you just use a rectangle so let's say a lasso tool lasso tool gives you the opportunity to freehand and right i'm using a mouse that's not going to be very very perfect right so in this case i might use a polygonal tool which gives gives the option to select uh, in anchors or point right so i can do it to so something like So the lasso tool basically so you are, your polygonal tool you make anchor tool from one end to another right so you make the selection right so you have point from point one two three so depending on the image you can use any of those selection tools available to you All right so uh, you have a magnetic uh, magnetic uh, lasso tool so magnet the difference between the lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool magnetic lasso tool has a bit of uh, some AI traits I, I don't know how to put it but it, it, it detects line for you so all you have to do is just uh, move along it and you realize that it's detecting the line and then making the selection for you detecting the line but you have to stay close to the area of the curve so you do that so you get back to where you started so you have your selection so until you get to the point where you started it's not going to so whatever you do with the selection is that you are copying cutting so let's copy you realize that the bag when you hide the layer the background is completely off and you have your image to do whatever you want to do with it so that's one way of but as you realize that uh, adobe has been trying as much as possible to make things very very easy for you so let's and undo go back and deselect there is this tool so when you select there is an option where you can so let's bring up uh, properties All right, so you have it here i usually like them here i like it here so you select so properties basically when you're on your layer or when, when you're on a particular layer or when you are particular to the properties change based on it so when you select the text to and you add a text to it you realize that the properties are going to change it gives you the properties related to what you are doing at that particular moment when you're on your layer on the particular on the layer it gives you the options available now 
Adobe has introduced where you have the select subject. It gives you it to, to automatically select the subject for you. So you select on the layer, open the properties panel, and then select subject. And Photoshop does the magic for you. It doesn't always work, but if it works, perfect. Right? You have a perfect selection. Uh, Photoshop has done the selection for you, and then you you don't have much to do right but it doesn't always always work on every image so that's why i, I had to take you through the lasso and the magnetic tool the light the, the marquee tool so that when you are when you are found in a on a, in a situation where you can easily just make a selection because of the contrast between what you are selecting in the background then you are you are left with no option to use the traditional tools so copy cut same way here to so hide and you realize that you have the image to work with right so as simple as that uh, the tools are very simple so let's let's go to the <coughs> so other selection tools we have a magic one the magic one the magic one and the quick selection to so the quick selection so you go in you are you are making a selection you stay within the image you want to select and then you move across the edges and then it selects the image for you right it's as simple as that the magic one the magic one you click and it makes a selection based on the color the colors you've selected so yeah i saw if i'm on white and i select white it, it selects a broad range of colors that are around that uh, sphere so you have uh, a tolerance you can increase the tolerance to let's say 100 let's deselect sorry control d to this uh deselect the selection right in me so now the tolerance is 100 so realize that it is it's going to give it's going to select a wide range right so this mostly when you have images that are like so let's say okay so let's have this image let me open this image you realize that the background is close to white gray gray close to white and they are probably from looking at it it's almost the same color all throughout so when i select you realize that i selected the wide range of colors that are close to where i've selected the the tolerance is high that's why it has it has gone in it has selected some part of the paint because it is white is there right so let's deselect and let's say reduce it to 32 and select so you have you have somewhat some perfect selection so this part is still uh, selected because of the white if you still reduce let's say 25 selection this is very close to perfect so it has selected the white for you so the selection tools are a range a range of them from the marquee to the lasso to the polygonal the magnetic lasso to magic ones quick selections these are very wide range of selection tools that are available to you to use depending on the image that are really that that is your that you are making a selection from right all right so the next tool we are going to be looking at is uh the crop tool we discussed uh, last week, I'm not going to uh, delve into that. Uh, eyedropper tool, so basically uh, you're making a selection. You want to pick a color. You realize that most of these colors, they have what we have, what we call the hex, the hex, hex decimal code, hex code in short. So the hex code, every color has a different hex code. So if, if you even take let's say red every red every shade of red has a different color code so let's say you are working on an image you, the client are saying to you a particular color he or she wants you just come import it here and do the eyedropper to, to select the particular color the client is looking for is where is wishing for you to use and you just take note of the hex code and you work with it it's as simple as that right uh right so now what we are going to deal with uh a, a couple of tools that are, in, that are into let's say i refer to them as correction tools so we have a spot healing brush tool healing brush tool patch tool contact alert 
so let me open this uh, let me open an email to explain that okay let's take a look at this beautiful landscape so you have this image right uh, yeah certain times you don't want some element within the image you want to do away with those elements uh, so let's say let's take the first one so you have the spot healing brush the spot healing brush so what you are basically doing you are you are you, are, you, you brush over a particular area that you don't you want to do away with so simple so let's say yes there are a couple of boats here so you have one two three four five when you zoom in i think there is another one here this might or might not be a boat so let's say you want to do away with this fifth one so you just brush and you allow photoshop do the magic it's as simple as that it's very very simple it's very very simple you don't want this like you can increase or decrease the size of the brush by clicking on the bracket sign on the on your keyboard so brush and photoshop does the magic isn't this beautiful <laughs> Ah, the world is very is very deceptive. Uh, if you are if you are in there, it's as, it's as simple as that. Very very deceptive. Very very deceptive. So don't let don't let pictures on the internet uh, wow you, right? So you have the spot in, and most, all of these do the same thing, but in different uh, angles. Uh, they do it differently. So the spot healing brush, you just brush it. The healing brush, what you are supposed to do first click an area so you realize that if i is going to alt click to define a source point so so let's say i'm cleaning this area but i want it to look like this uh, lower right corner so i i hold on click on alt and i make uh, i brush it i brush around where i want my find the destination to look like so when you go there let's zoom in and see what happens so i said when i brush it it starts to look like where i did the selection this applies mostly with the, the back to the example of the acne so your face there are different uh, parts of the face so so let's say you are cleaning a particular part of the cheek and you want it to look like the other part of the cheek so you go and select that cheek and then you come and you brush it over all right so at the end of the day you are, you are, you are correcting uh, part of the image i'm not going to be introducing to other tools i would like you to also experiment with some of them and see what they actually uh, and we also have the shape tool you want to draw a shape rectangle you pick the foreground color you want you realize that you don't have square so when you want a square you hold on shift and then you drag what it does it gives you, it 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 creates the rectangle but this time around it holds and it picks a very what's the name realize that you don't have right realize that you have rectangle but you don't have square for a square you hold on shift and you drag and you get a square so equal ratio so you have 712 pixel by 712 pixel if you don't hold on shift so what i did is control z to undo if you don't hold on shift you can get a rectangle so depending on what you are doing the shape you want you have the rounded rectangle um, the rounded rectangle it, it, it creates the rectangle and then it increases i think it, it has no need for it to be even be here because when you have the rectangle the options available include curve curve it at the corners so i think the rounded rectangle i think photoshop should look at that i don't because what the right rounded rectangle is the rectangle does the same i don't i don't see the it used but i'm sure it will be out very soon so you have the uh, ellipse to circle you want a perfect circle you hold on shift if you don't want a perfect circle, you want a sphere you want something uh, uh, spherical you click and drag to the shape you want control z control z so these are shapes polygon polygonal to you select the side number of sides so let's say i want a seven sided polygon click drag and you have i have a 
seven sided swag move right so undo undo so these are shape tools rectangle right uh let's right, call line tool and we also have the custom shape tools so the custom shape tool when you when you install photoshop initially there are certain shapes that it comes with let me increase the thumbnail light thumbnail there are certain shapes that it comes with you can download and the shapes you can or you can also add to a shape you can draw a part you can outline and uh, save the selection as a shape all right so a couple of we have the x mark a couple of uh, disabled signs that are available, available to you i hardly use this i don't remember the last time i used any of this shape to so hardly use them uh, i think with this and uh, you know what a tool does now what you are moving next to is to understand design elements and design principles right so you, are you, are, you understand design elements and design principles when you understand them and you apply them to your work it becomes very easier what it means is that when you are giving any other software right the reason why I'm, uh, this introduction is to photoshop so you need to know half the, the, the appearance or the, the interface of photoshop right so it, it makes it easier for you after you've learned the, the, the elements of design and the principles of design right to apply those in any other software becomes very easy so uh, subsequent videos will touch start to based on adjust, uh, adjustments and introduce to us what uh, was the name graphic design elements and graphic design principles we'll do, introduce, we'll do that introduction and then afterwards we'll apply all what you've learned to design a couple of uh, artworks and then hopefully by the end of that we'll develop some interest for graphic design and then you can start to read more so thanks for watching this video once again thanks very much and then don't forget to like subscribe comment and uh, click on the notification bell to get notification anytime i upload a video and don't forget to share with your friends and families thank you very much have a blessed blessed coming week thank you very much